I'm on camera again. Hey, y'all. <laughs> that the one you're waiting for? I don't know. I never know what I'm getting It wasn't last water. time. <laughs> hey, nice. There you go. Thanks, Cheers, man. man. Have a good one, guys. I never received nothing. Top <laughs> drive. Hey, I saw parts now. That sounds like a socket set. Sounds like a socket set. Yeah. Sounds broken. <laughs> Bet it was something nice, though. Maple Leaf Land and Molson's Lager, Canada. Mm. Is that a squirrel? <laughs> squirrel in the bushes. Yeah. He's laughing and I was like, we're in. Moose, we need to get maple. We've got metric on the covens. Can we take maple back home? Okay. 25 cent note? 25 cents, you say? They got a lot of effort for 25 cents. It's got to be worth more than 25 cents to print that. It's like a caterpillar donut. Getting 53 block all over my face. I've never seen Japanese stuff given this bad. Just looking at this engine and thinking how bad the rust is on it. To give you an idea, in Australia, there'd be like engines from the 20s we'd drag out of paddocks that would have less corrosion on the outside of this. Like I've seen chassis just sitting in farmer's paddocks with engines in them and they look better than this. This is just something else. Like you can pull bits off the block. Like it's just chunks of it just coming off. Like it's just stuffed. So the injector lines better be in here. This is the timing cover probably. Well, those are the injector lines. That's that's all fine, Danny. Why are you guys still wearing the same shirts as uh, last time? You smell like swamp ass. Yeah, because we said we were gonna do it the next day, but this is actually just ten minutes after the last video. We figure better get this cylinder head on. Thanks for the gasket. No worries. Yep, it only goes on one way. If you can imagine that, the holes will not line up the other way. No so way. let's get it the right way. It's like a properly engineered... Yeah, there's no like accidental front. It doesn't say up or front. Because it doesn't it need to. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. need to. And if you bolt it down the wrong way, then there's... That's, you're pretty talented yeah. and not at the same time. There's a lot of import duties and taxes and um, uh, our dollar isn't that great. Yeah. So just to stud this engine would set us back at about another thousand. You don't really need to stud it until you get above 35 pounds of boost. Are you planning on getting that high? Uh, I think that would explode <laughs> anything that I was, like any drive line I'm gonna put behind it would probably be in pieces. We are, however, building the rest of the engine. We had to get new injectors anyway because our tips failed. Yep. We got 100 horsepower injectors, which if you want to tell the injection pump to give it the injectors that much fuel, you can, that option is there for you. We're basically gonna do everything except for head studs. If you want to put it in some crazy pull truck or something later, you don't have to pull the head off to do the studs. Yeah. You can pull one out at a time, install the head studs. There's a whole sequence for that, which you make great for a great video. Yep. For now, stop bugging us about head studs. We are going to use the head bolts. Call us ARP. <laughs> Crazy. It is ridiculously heavy, I've got to yeah. say. <clears throat> oh, finger crush. Finger. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Good, <don't>, eh? <laughs> I'm fine, don't worry about me. Don't drag. That's it. You got the air blower on this too? Yeah, we can. <sighs> you guys want an extra hand there? You all right? <laughs> That's sweet. Oh, I'm <laughs> dropping a note. 
through the gasket, into yeah. the hole. You got yours? Yeah. Well, the inlet ports aren't very big. No, so that is uh, an upgrade that a lot of the pole trucks and that do is just mill this entire uh, intake plenum off and then do one big yeah. uh, intake yeah. plenum. You gotta let it breathe and you have, to, you have to let the air out so you can let the air in so you can get as much fuel in there to burn that with the air. Um, again, an upgrade that will add a couple grand to your build. And I don't think that- No, I don't necessary. think that's gonna be needed. <laughs> We do smell like swamp ass. It's been a 12 hour day. So we uh, are calling it before we screw something up massively. And then uh, we'll be back at it in the morning. Remember, not filthy. You're not Al. <laughs>66 foot pounds then we'll do 89 and then we'll torque them another 90 degrees so we've got a we've got a tool for that very cool Sweet. i'll button them down bleeding money from my lock type <laughs> tipping over <laughs> this looks like something that would allow you to forget one bolt easily. Especially when people are talking to you. All right, uh, next one's 88 foot pounds. I'll grab the, uh, my little special tool. Don't talk to me. Hey, Alan. Don't f***ing talk to me. You need a spotter. Yeah. Well, we'll work together for the next one. So we're going to go 90 degree on the last step. Um, you can use a degree scale thing, um, which is that thing. Basically put socket top and bottom, tie this to something, set your needle to zero, and then when you rotate it, it'll let you know that you're at 90. So, because I've done 5,000 Subaru heads, you also have to do this on them. The problem is, Especially with all these bolts, as you get confused which one you've done and you could go again. So what I do is just clean all the bolt heads off and put a, a pen mark at the top of each one. So at the end of it, you can you can go through and go, yep, they should all be facing that way. And uh, then you know you haven't buggered it up. We've torqued them to 88 foot pounds now. If you set the torque to about 110, um, and it starts to move, then you've forgotten it. If, if it clicks at, 100, say 100, 100 is a safe number. If it clicks at 100, you know you've done your 90 degrees, another way to double check. What I usually do is turn it, because you're off by like 10, tighten it, and then set it to zero. Oh, yeah. Okay, otherwise you're off by like 10. That last 90's a doozy. <laughs> yeah. I put some tension on it. If you're doing the twelve valve head, um the bolt that goes through the rocker assembly is actually a head bolt as well. So that gets a torque um, after the 88 foot pounds. 
and then after that torque it gets the uh, the extra 90 degrees along with it so don't forget that step we'll throw the rockers on uh, we'll throw some push rods in lubricate that and then set some valves so four valve head but still push rod pretty common duramaxes and i think power strokes are the same probably most of the japanese diesels are as well they don't rev push rods work they're super reliable does the job panic the guy whose engine it is you leave your valve settings tight and then tell him to roll it over he's like it's locking up <laughs> but, it worked but uh, back them off um, on the timing cover itself there will be a tag it's a very important tag if you are moving parts back and forth between two engines make sure that you keep the tag for the this now 24 valve and the valve settings for these are still 10 thou for the intake 20 for the exhaust um, the firing order is one, five, three, six, two, four. Split, yeah. split it in half and start over again. One, five, three, six, two, four. So when one is rocking, you set six. When five is rocking, you set two. When three is rocking, you set four. When one, six is rocking, you set one. And there you go. Patrol all over again now. Good yeah, old except TV it probably won't there. rattle after we're finished. Sweet. Sweet. As and the firing order makes sense. Yep. Sure. Sweet. Rocking on two. Yep. So which one did you do, uh, Woody? I've done them all, mate. You've done them all? Yeah. Right on. Let's check it out. Let's so, check them. So, triple check. Is this like an aviation engine or something? Yeah. You know what? When, when this blows up on the dyno, nobody's going to say, well, it was probably the, the valves that were hitting the pistons that Woody set. It's, mm. uh, it's, yeah, it's they are. rich screwed up. Play so. the finger pointing game. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I get it. So, okay. so which one's going to rock and which one do I check? At the moment, I think we should be back to six rocking now, yes? Six rocking. Check, okay. check one. Check one. I set that one. Maybe. You said that one. We had to reset it. Oh, yeah? Okay. We've already done it twice. Because <laughs> Woody can't be trusted. I really like that. Good job, you have a job tomorrow. Okay, so you guys probably noticed these little blue cloths uh, that are in the injector holes while we were setting the valves and you're probably saying, well, you idiots, you need to install the injectors because this bolt is kind of hard to get at underneath the exhaust uh, rocker. The reason for that is I sent the injectors out to get tested. We didn't know the history of the engine, so uh, you can't just assume that it was running or whatever, take somebody's word on it. I pulled them out, I had them tested. Each one of them was dribbling um, and didn't have a nice spray pattern. And the, another reason for even checking them is that the VP44 pump is set to uh, pop the injectors at 300 bar. 300 bar in PSI, just multiply that by 14.7. Um, and the P pump pops at 260 bar. So we need to bring that popping pressure down because the P pump uh, physically can't pop those injectors. Um, to get new tips uh, in the old injectors and calibrated, uh, cost more than an entire set that we could buy um, from our conversion company that already had them. He gets them from another supplier. So we did not get the injectors in time. It's for the sake of making the video on setting the valves. We popped the valve or the, the rockers in. Uh, we only need to remove the exhaust valve and the setting will be very close. Um, what you just want to be careful of is that they're not set too low and that the valves are hitting the pistons when you're turning them over. So turn them over by hand. There's a tool to do it in the flywheel, but you can also just grab the bolt on the alternator. It works kind of like a ratchet. It's nice and handy. It's right up top of the front. Um, we're gonna throw our valve cover on just to keep things clean. Um, we'll snug those bolts down and we'll get into the uh, putting the injection pump on and showing you the lines that we got uh, to make this conversion work. Here we go. Let's put that intake cover on. Take a wild stab at what those torque settings are. 18. 17.9. <laughs> 18.9. 
18, but I'm gonna do them up to 20. <gasps> So right now, with the pump is off, it's easy to see the hole in the back of the cam, and then this little knobby um, goes into that hole. That marks your uh, engine at top dead center number one. So because we're done our time, our valve set, we're good to pop this in. I generally, if it goes in, I go back a little bit and then hold pressure against it until it drops in, then you know you're in. Right there. And I like to be able to pull it in and out by hand. Then you know it's not um, jammed one way or another. I'll hold it, you smash it. There we go. So behind here is this very strong plastic cap. So as you pull it out, it'll look like this with uh, nothing um, touching the actual rotary assembly. The other side has a flag. So we didn't know where our engine was when we pulled the pump off. So we can rotate it, just put the nut back on it again and tighten it with a wrench. We'll keep an eye inside until we see the flag and then we will time the pump. The timing is done in the pump from factory. So this will be timed to whatever it says on the timing cover tag on the P-pump. So the, it might be 14, 16, this one was? 12.5. 12.5, there we go. We've got the flag in, so we can put our cap back on again. And then we'll mount it to the engine. All right, so there's a few things that are different about the 24 valve head, mainly clearance issues, but uh, it's kind of a neat pump. Yep, so um, it's basically this pump's built to go on all sorts of engines, so they've got in and outlets on either side for everything. They just cap one, so you, you just move from one side to the other, swap them around. We've got some new lines that come with it, so we can uh, get around it. Yeah, so basically we plug the line, uh, the oil feed comes in the back of that pump, which is really annoying really and hard, hard to get, to get it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so instead we move that to the front here, and it comes with a longer line, so we should be able to pop it in. I think we can still get our um, our fuel return in there, but if it doesn't, we'll just move that to the front uh, as well. well. I'm not gonna so. have any of that Dodge specific stuff on here either, so right. I'll just have a cable pull Just it. a cable going to here and a little spring, and you're, you're sort laughing. Of a big spring, maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got a big heavy one that Stefan always complains about, I just put my foot on it. I don't think I'd like this one. idling, full throttle. Not, not stopping ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's throw it on. You got it? Yeah, yeah, it? yeah you. I'll hold this back. I'm on the Drop back up with the nuts. <laughs> That's the most important job, keeping that goddamn dipstick out of my way. <laughs> Good job, boy. Now, one very important step is the way I have it on the stand right now. I can't put the bracket on because the mount for my engine stand gets in the way of the support for the back of the pump. If you do not put that support on, you will get the opportunity to do this entire, entire time and cover and pump setup again. But the good news is you get faster the, the more you do. That's the only good news. Oh, almost. Can't get my nuts on. Got it. Get my nuts on. Tightening this nut, I generally tighten it as tight as I can possibly get it. If the you still have the front timing cover on, I usually stick a, a long wrench on the front balancer bolts and tighten it at the same time. Uh, if the timing cover is off like we have it, there's nothing wrong with sticking a screwdriver in between the teeth of the gears and reefing on it. We put it back to stock. You can advance your time for more power. We want to see what a stock injection pump does with a uh, better flowing head. And then we'll make all our adjustments to the pump 
on the dyno when we uh, when we get that far. We've got our injection pump on. We're gonna stick our injection lines on. Al's gonna put the front seal on the timing cover itself. We're gonna put the timing cover on, and we can take a picture of a 24 valve P-pumped Cummins engine. We are quickly running out of time though, and that is probably about as far as we're gonna get today. So this kit is uh, for this pump made for the 24 valve engine, which actually has a different block and it's got more oil outlets on it. So it's got sort of along here. Um, don't know why, but it is what it is. So they've designed these hoses to use an extra, you can see the extra ones there in this picture. They've designed it to use a spare one. So you've got to oil the pump, the P pump, and also oil the uh, vacuum pump, which I will need because we don't have um, hydro boost brakes or anything like that on any cars in Australia. So we'll probably just pull that oil pressure switch out there because that doesn't need, that won't work on it on the car anyway because it's just for a dodge. We'll pull that out and bin it or throw it at a rusting dodge or something like that. Um, pull this out, run that, that straight into the vac pump and run that straight into the P pump and we'll be good to go. Where are you gonna put your oil pressure sensor? So there's a spare uh, MPT fitting here. I can just put my oil pressure switch straight in there and it'll work fine. So while they're messing with the oil um, galleries, hooking up, covering up the oil holes, I'm gonna throw these lines on. These were uh, custom made lines, nice stainless steel, so they'll never rust in Australia. And then just to keep the pump and the, uh, the block closed up, um, I still have to get the injectors and the crush tubes when we get our injectors. Um, it says right in the instructions, don't expect to thread these in by hand all by yourself. Even though it's a kit and it's supposed to bolt on directly, that is that true, Al? Kits just bolt on. I've, and, heard, and there was, I've heard that there's a rumor, but yeah. I've never experienced it myself. The Dodge sensor is really long and it's an inch and 16 socket. Only a chrome one will fit on. So just take a pair of ice grips and snap that little plastic off. It basically falls off and then you can uh, get your socket on there and just pull it out. It's tricky to know what size things are because they start out as one size but then they get so rusty that it becomes another size. want the reverse uh, intercooler on his engine, but you need it to clear the um, injection lines. Uh, even with that on there, it's still the, the, the normal intake plenum won't clear the fuel lines. So I suggested to Al he double up in case it gets to minus 50 in, in Australia. Make some marshmallows and stuff when you're on the road. Yeah. Yes. Or maybe what if you're cook some toast or something? Coffee? With That is as far as we're gonna go with the build for now, because you guys wanna stay another month? Nah. You'll never see these guys again. Except on the internet. <laughs> Except on the internet. So guys, thanks for coming out. Yeah, we guys. really appreciate you guys thanks coming. Thanks so much, Rich. Yeah, and giving us a chance to build one of these. Uh, from here, our, we'll be taking the next video where we'll be finishing up the loose ends. Uh, the frost plugs are waiting for us in town. The injectors are on their way. Water pump, power steering pump which will all be one little episode, I think. We'll keep that one nice and short. Here we go. You know what I like about this job? Nothing. But I like Alan, so that's why I do it. Just pop it. Yeah. These aren't that good. I'm hoping they don't make condoms. <laughs> Frank doesn't, I hope he doesn't make condoms. <laughs> Oh yeah, look how tight that nice is. Nice and deep. <laughs> oh, this is all going on our channel. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>